Hi guys, this video is on how to get started on a Palo Alto Network firewall and we'll review some of the core components. I've actually got it all configured as otherwise uh, it will take me a long time so instead I'll show you what I've got configured. This is my uh, network diagram in front I've configured on the firewall and this topology is configured on my VM firewall on Oracle VirtualBox on my laptop and there's nothing really to test within these networks it's all conceptual the reason for this is it would just take me a long time to set all this up but hopefully you'll still get a good grasp of the basics so looking at the diagram uh, we'll have a look at the interfaces first uh, we'll be using three physical Ethernet interfaces uh, you can see here so ETH11 is the first interface and um, we'll be configuring VLANs as well so ETH11 and the VLAN 50. You can see here ETH11, ETH11, ETH11 again. So we're using the physical interface four times, but we're creating VLAN interfaces of them. So 50, 10, 20, 60. These are my VLANs. The next interface is ETH12, and we're creating VLAN 80 off this one. And finally, the third interface, we're using the interface itself here. So these are my networks. We've got LAN 1. Here, 192.168.10.24. We've got LAN 2 here, we've got DMZ1 here, DMZ2 here, and we've got third party network here. And finally, we've got the internet here, and we've got a, a fake public subnet, but this is uh, obviously not routable, so uh, I shouldn't get in trouble for it. Right, so what we can do now is look at the config to see how all this is configured on the Palo Alto Network Firewall web GUI. So we're on the dashboard and if we go to Network tab here, this is where the interfaces and zones are configured. So the interfaces, uh, we can see the physical interface ETH11 here and we can see the VLAN interfaces 10, 20, 50. See Ethernet 1, 2, VLAN uh, 80 configured and Ethernet 3 is directly configured. We can see all the configuration on the right hand side here. Uh, how it's all configured so uh, the VLAN uh, tag, um, security zone etc and comment IP addressing, uh, virtual route as well what I've intentionally done is um, I've left this interface unconfigured so it's not configured so we can configure it now so you can see how sub interfaces are configured VLAN interfaces are configured and the way we do that is if we click on the physical interface that we are configuring the VLAN interface off and click on add sub interface so the first thing we want to do here is um, enter a number to identify the sub interface and we try and keep this same as the VLAN ID so 60 here we can add a comment DMZ2 VLAN tag 60 uh, if we go to IP version 4 if we add a, an IP address which will be um, 172.20.60.0 slash 24 and finally if we go back to config uh, we'd uh, assign to a virtual router to make it routable as part of this uh, default virtual router uh, we'll come back to this shortly and finally we'd give it a security zone so you can specify the security zone from here new zone or if we click OK here uh, we've created the VLAN interface here. We can go to zones here and create the zone from here as well. So add zone, uh, give it a name, DMZ2. The type, so because our uh, type is layer 3, our interface type, our zone needs to be layer 3 as well. And um, just to go over these, uh, we've got the tap interface, so that's basically used for passive monitoring of a switch using a span port. Uh, so must be assigned to the uh, tap zone if it's a tap interface then we've got the virtual wire which uh, joins two uh, firewall interfaces together so uh, using a virtual wire object and it's usually used when uh, no switching or routing is needed so when you're dropping the firewall in the middle of a network without having to change uh, the uh, layer 3 topology so that's uh, a good one for that we've also got layer 2 uh, this provides switching through uh, a VLAN between interfaces so basically the Palo Alto behaves like a, a switch for the interfaces assigned to a certain VLAN. It's uh, used for, or typically uh, can be used for multi-tenant networks. And then there's layer 3 which we're going to be using now. So it's mostly uh, commonly used uh, interface type. Uh, so the layer 3 interface uh, 
is uh, when the firewall needs to be routable uh, as you can route traffic with the lathe interface so we're going to select it here and then so that's the type for the zone and then the interface it will show me uh, the available interfaces so we've got our um, VLAN 60 here so click that you've also got other options here like uh, including and excluding IP addressing uh, you've got a zone protection profile which is kind of a DOS protections uh, and some uh, asymmetric routing settings in there as well we'll just click OK here and then we've created our DMZ2 interface here if we go back to interfaces with the DMZ2 uh, zone created we can uh, click on the interface the uh, VLAN 60 sub interface VLAN interface and now we can uh, select our zone in here actually it's already selected sorry so we uh, identified it within the zone so that's fine uh, click OK again and we can see the zone here DMZ2 so we've looked at interfaces and zones uh, next we will have a quick look at policies here so security policies I've got some uh, security policies created here but I've also done a separate video on how to create security policies so I'm not going to go into too much detail um, but basically you've got um, two uh, implicit policies at the bottom here of your security policies uh, implicit rules and you can select them you can override them um, with the options down here so override and then if you've already changed it you can revert it as well it um, obviously it's grayed out at the minute but if you change it then you'd have the option to revert it as well your policies uh, explicit ones uh, are created here and uh, the firewall is a top-down approach so as soon as a, a policy is matched it stops looking at the rest of the policies from top down um, how to edit these uh, rules you can uh, click on a dialog box on the right hand side and you've got some options here of editing it uh, removing it looking at the value um, and then also you can drag these around as well so I might want to drag this network into this rule uh, you've also got this um, object uh, dialog here so you can have a look at say network addresses services things like that so addresses and you can drag these as well so you can drag it like that so it's very similar to a checkpoint firewall if you're familiar with it next we will have a look at a NAT policy I've only got one configured but basically you configure your NAT policies here so my NAT policy if we click on it it's just to allow internet access So my policy is to allow the LAN users out to the internet using the public IP address of the internet facing interface uh, using source dynamic NatPat to share the single IP address and um, you can see the further you see the settings in here so original packet um, so the sources are my LAN networks and then you can see the destination zones the internet and it's using uh, ETH13 which is the internet facing uh, interface here and then if we go to translated packet we can see it's been translated using dynamic IP import um, address type is using the interface address ETH13 interface and the IP address as well so 555.1 finally to route traffic we need to use the virtual router feature so if we go to network and we go to virtual routers we have our one single uh, default router here um, the default router is usually fine for most use cases but you can add further virtual routers for specific use cases as well and if we click on default we can configure our static and dynamic routing in here as well including multicast routing so uh, what we want to do is add a basic static default route so looking at our network diagram uh, we want to make sure that the ADSL route is our next hop and let's pretend it's 5.5.5.6 uh, .5 the last usable IP address in this uh, subnetwork so if we click on add here uh, let's give it a name of default route and then um, we give it our default route destination address 
here um, we specify the interface which will be one slash three the physical interface and the next hop will be 5.5.5.6 sorry I've uh, specified it in the wrong uh, section so that's the next top type IP address um, so we specify our IP address below it so 5.5.5.6 so once we've specified the IP address we click OK and we've uh, applied our default route there click OK again and we've set up our static default route uh, going back to our network diagram we've um, had a look at the interfaces how to create a sub interface uh, had a look at the zones how to create a um, how to create the zones and apply them to interfaces we've had a look at security policies and that and um, our virtual route as well and adding a default route to it um, the last bit probably is just having a look at the objects so if we click on objects you can see here addresses and this is where our address objects are uh, located so you can create them from here if you do not want to create them from the security rules you've also got the other objects as well the other common one which is services service objects here but typically going back to security policies the security policies if we look at our objects uh, if you can try and use the uh, application instead um, which is identified by the lay 7 signature which is uh, a lot more accurate than just a service and a port and that's it for this video thanks for watching